The Status of Jesus in Islam Part 3 Allah clarifies this point further in his saying. With Allah, the example of the creation of Jesus, peace be upon him, is like the creation of Adam, who was born from dust without a father or mother. Allah simply said to him, become a man. And he became as Allah willed. How do you then assume that Jesus is a God on the basis that he has no father when you accept that Adam is human despite his having no father or mother? The undoubtable truth about Jesus is that which was revealed to you by your Lord, so do not be one of those who doubt and are unsure. Instead, be firm on the truth that you have. If any one of the Christians disputes with you, O messenger, regarding the matter of Jesus, and claims that he was not Allah's servant after the correct knowledge has come to you, then say to them. Come, let us call our sons and your sons, our women and your women, ourselves and yourselves, and let us gather together and then pray to Allah to send down his curse on those of us who are lying. That which has been mentioned to you about Jesus, peace be upon him, is the true tale that contains no lie or doubt. There is no one worthy of worship besides Allah alone. Allah is mighty in his authority and wise in his planning and instruction. Q and 3 colon 59-62 This extraordinary comparison is a decisive proof that serves to nullify all the claims of the Christians since if it is not possible or correct according to sound minds, religious doctrines. An innate nature is to claim that Adam, whom God created from dust with his hands and breathed into him his soul, is God or the Son of God or part of a divine trinity. Then for all the more reason such cannot be claimed for Jesus. The creation of Adam was far more remarkable and amazing than that of Jesus as he was created from dust and dust is not part of the human race. On the other hand, Jesus was created from a woman, which is part of the human race. She carried him in her womb in the same manner that women carry children and gave birth to him in the same manner that women give birth. This is one of the greatest proofs that can be used to invalidate the false claims and misconceptions of the Christians. As a matter of fact, the angels were created from light without any father or mother and the devil was created from fire without any parents. So this is something far more remarkable and indicative of the great ability of God, the creator, molder, and originator of the heavens and earth. Even the creation of Eve from the rib of Adam, without any mother, was more miraculous than the creation of Jesus, who was conceived, carried in the womb of a woman and given birth to just as normal women give birth to children. So there does not remain any connection for the Christians according to those who possess reasoning, religion and fairness. However, in spite of all this, in the eyes of Islam and the Muslims, Jesus is far more superior than Adam and many of the other prophets and messengers. According to the Quran and the teachings of Prophet Muhammad, this is since Jesus is one of the five messengers possessing strong will and determination, according to Islam. So after all this has been said, what is it that will change between Christians and Islam, God's true religion, which is also the religion of Jesus and the rest of the prophets? Won't they realize that the greatest form of misguidance and disbelief is to claim that God has a wife and child since this is the biggest insult and debasement that can be leveled against God? Lord of all that exists. The greatest denial of Jesus is to disbelieve in the true message that he brought such as by saying that he is the Son of God and so on even though he clearly stated from the very first day that he was a servant of God who had given him revelation, made him a prophet, blessed him wherever he was and enjoined on him prayer and charity. These are all characteristics that apply to someone who was created, raised, nurtured and in need of his Lord, submitting to his majesty and obedient to his commands. Do they expect for the Muslims to put aside their reasoning and reject Allah and all that the messengers came with? Do they expect them to choose God's wrath, severe punishment and hellfire, which he prepared for those who reject him, instead of his contentment and reward in paradise? Which was prepared for those who obey and worship him? We call on all those Christians with sound reasoning and who are fair and balanced to stand up before God in groups and individually and reflect on their view of Islam. This is the true religion of God and it is the religion of Jesus and all of the prophets and messengers. Islam has honored Jesus, treated him with justice, and given him the due position that he deserves. I am sure that if you do this sincerely, without any influence from vain desires, and you ask God to help you while looking into the proofs found in your Gospels, even after its distortion and alteration, you will be guided to the truth. Which is that Muhammad is a messenger of God and the book that he brought, i.e. the Qur'an, is nothing but the truth revealed from him. So whatever God has stated, in the Qur'an, concerning Jesus is the truth. He was a servant and messenger of God. God created him just as he created everyone else including all of the messengers for the sole purpose of worshipping him. 
subjecting themselves to his majesty and submitting themselves to his grandness. Below are some examples taken from your Gospels. Translators note, the translation used for biblical quotes in this booklet comes from the Revised Standard Version of the Bible, which can be accessed online at. It should be noted that currently there are many translations to the Gospels, New Testament, in the English language. The average reader needs to only view the various translations of the Bible that exist and he will notice the gross changes and alterations in the interpretation and translation of many verses in the Bible, not to mention some being left out completely. This is further proof that the Bible has been distorted and altered as confirmed by God in his final revelation, the Qur'an, which he guaranteed to protect and preserve in its original form. Allah says, Verily, we sent down the reminder, the Qur'an, and we will surely preserve it, from corruption. Qur'an 15 9 I alone revealed this Qur'an to the heart of Muhammad, peace be upon him, as a reminder for people. I will guard the Qur'an from anything being added to it or subtracted from it, or anything in it being exchanged or altered, Qur'an 15 9. God did not make such a promise and guarantee for his prior revelations. This is why there can be found obvious and noticeable contradictions in the present-day versions of these revealed books of the Torah and Gospel that confirm and support what is stated in the Qur'an and the teachings of Prophet Muhammad. In the seventh verse of chapter 4 of the Gospel of Matthew, it states, 1. Jesus said to him, Again it is written, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Matthew 4 verse 7. 2. In this same chapter, there is a story about Jesus and the devil, in which Satan orders Jesus to prostrate to him to which the Messiah replies, Be gone Satan, for it is written. You shall worship, prostrate only to, the Lord your God and him only shall you serve, i.e. worship. This was the message of all of the prophets and it was the argument that Jesus used against Satan. This clearly proves that all of the prophets including Jesus and Muhammad came to establish the belief that God was one and that he was the only Lord that had the right to be worshipped. Jesus used as proof the previously revealed books that state that God is the only Lord and that he is the only one that deserves to be worshipped and prostrated to. This is the same thing that Allah revealed to, Prophet, Muhammad when he said. We had sent to every previous nation a messenger instructing his nation to worship Allah alone, and leave the worship of others beside him such as idols. Satans etc. Some of them were guided by Allah and had faith in him, while others rejected Allah and went against his messenger so he did not guide them and they deserved misguidance. So travel through the earth to see for yourselves what the end result of the deniers was after the punishment and destruction came upon them. Q1636 He also revealed to him, and we did not send any messenger before you except that we revealed to him, there is no God that has the right to be worshipped in truth, except me, so worship me alone. And I have not sent before you, O messenger, any messenger except that I revealed to him that there is no true God except me, so worship me alone and do not associate any partner with me. Q2125 These statements that God revealed to Muhammad are in complete conformity with what Jesus stated in his reply to Satan. They are also in conformity with what Jesus said when he called the tribe of Israel, saying, Verily, Allah is my Lord and your Lord, so worship only him. This is the straight path. And Allah, may he be glorified, is both my Lord and your Lord, so make worship sincere for him alone. This which have mentioned to you is the straight path that leads to the pleasure of Allah. Q1936 These verses also agree with what Jesus will say on the day of judgment when his Lord will ask him. Remember that Allah will address Jesus son of Mary, peace be with him, on the day of rising and ask him whether he told people to worship him and his mother besides Allah. Jesus will reply, declaring Allah's purity, it was not right for me to tell them anything but the truth. If I had said that you would know it, because nothing is hidden from you. You know what I keep hidden within myself, but I do not know what is with you. You are the only one who knows everything that is hidden and everything that is apparent. Jesus will say to his Lord, I only told people what you instructed me to tell them, to worship you alone. For as long as I remained amongst them I watched over what they were saying. When my term ended and I was raised to the sky alive, you, O Lord, were watching their actions. You are a witness to everything and nothing is hidden from you, so you know what I said to them and what they said after me. Q and 5 colon 116 117 3. In chapter 11 of the Gospel of Matthew, verse 25, it states, At that time Jesus declared, I thank thee, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hidden these things from the wise and understanding ones and revealed them to babes, infants. 
This shows that Jesus was one of God's servants and messengers. He acknowledged the right of his Lord who created him and bestowed blessings on him, and thus turned to him in thanks while affirming that he alone was the Lord of heaven and earth. This is since God is the one who made these two creations, the heaven and the earth, as well as everything inside them, in between them and upon them. No one else had any part in this, whether Jesus or anyone else, nor can anyone rival him in this matter. 4. In chapter 14 of the Gospel of Matthew, verse 23, it states, And after he had dismissed the crowds, he, Jesus, went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Prayer is one of the greatest acts of worship that is performed for God, and it is only God's servants that stand in need of his mercy who do it. Allah says in the Quran, O mankind. It is you who stand in need of Allah, whereas Allah is rich, free of all needs, most praiseworthy. O people, you are the ones in need of Allah in all your affairs and in all your conditions. And Allah is the self-sufficient who does not need you for anything, the praiseworthy in this world and the hereafter for what he decrees for his servants. Quran 35 15 and he says, the Messiah, Jesus, will never be too proud to reject being a servant of God, nor the angels who are the ones close to him. And whoever is too proud and rejects worshipping him, then he will gather them all together unto himself. Jesus, son of Mary, will never be proud and reject being a servant of Allah. The close angels who do not go against Allah's instruction and who do as they are instructed will also never disregard being Allah's servants. How, then, do you take Jesus as a god? How do the idolaters take angels as gods? If anyone rejects worshipping Allah and turns away from it, that he will gather all of them before him on the day of rising and will recompense each one with what they deserve. Q and 4 colon 172 Jesus was a servant of God and he was not nor will he ever be too proud to worship him. This is his condition and the condition of all of the prophets and angels. 5. In chapter 26 of the Gospel of Matthew, verse 39, it states that the Messiah, Jesus, fell on his face and prayed, My Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. There is further proof in this text that Jesus was a servant and worshipper of God who had no control over repelling harm or bringing benefit to himself. The text also shows that he sought refuge in God during times of hardship and asked for his assistance and humbled himself before him in order to remove the harm and danger that was approaching him. So he fell prostrate with his face on the ground, seeking nearness to God, lowering himself before him. Showing need for him and expressing the belief that no one had the ability to repel harm except him. This is the state of all of the messengers, not to mention all of mankind. 6. In chapter 21 of the Gospel of Matthew, verse 46, it states, But when they tried to arrest him, they feared the multitudes, since they held him to be a prophet. This verse shows that the majority of the people who believed in God and in Jesus were monotheists with pure and sincere faith as they believed that Jesus was a messenger and prophet. This proves that Jesus had taught this to them and cultivated them to believe in that. So they did not use to believe that he was God or the Son of God. Since he would not teach people these things. 7. In chapter 23 of the Gospel of Matthew, verse 10, it states that Jesus said, Neither be called masters, for all of you, even the Messiah, have one master. Translators note, this text was adapted from what is found in the Revised Standard Edition of the Bible to conform to the original text of this booklet, which was written in Arabic and references an Arabic translation of the Bible. This biblical text is similar to the Quranic text in which Allah informs us about the time when his messenger Jesus, told the tribe of Israel, and verily, Allah is my Lord and your Lord. Allah is my Lord and your Lord, and he is the only one that deserves to be followed and feared. So, worship him alone. This worship of Allah and being mindful of him that I instruct you to do is the straight path which has no crookedness. Q&351 So Allah, i.e. God, is the Lord of Jesus. He is his master, nurturer and owner. And he is the Lord, Master and Owner of all mankind. In his treatise, The Clear Evidences, the Muslim scholar Taqiyuddin al-Hilali indicated that some translators have distorted this text but in spite of that. The English translation was saved from this corruption. 8. In chapter 17 of the Gospel of John, verse 3, it states, And this is the eternal life that they know thee the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. This text confirms that the message that all of the prophets came with, which was that there is no deity that has the right to be worshipped except Allah. It also confirms that Jesus was a messenger of God.
this applied to his time, and every nation had its own time and messenger, as Allah says. And I have not sent before you, O messenger, any messenger except that I revealed to him that there is no true God except me, so worship me alone and do not associate any partner with me. Q&21-25 And he says, And we indeed sent to every nation a messenger, saying to his people. We had sent to every previous nation a messenger instructing his nation to worship Allah alone, and leave the worship of others beside him such as idols, satans etc. Q1636. 9. In chapter 12 of the Gospel of Mark, verses 28 to 30, it states. And one of the scribes came up and heard them disputing with one another, and seeing that he, Jesus, answered them well, asked him, which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered. The first is, hear, O Israel. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This was the first commandment. And in verse 32 of the same chapter, it states that, the scribe said to him, You are right, teacher. You have stated truthfully that he is one and that there is none other but he. Then in verse 34 of the same chapter, it states, And when Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. This first commandment mentioned by Jesus is the same commandment that Allah prescribed to all of his messengers. Including Jesus. And this was the commandment that the messengers passed on to their nations. He has ordained for you religious matters similar to what I instructed Noah to convey and act on and what I have revealed to you, O messenger. He has ordained for you similar to what I instructed Abraham, Moses and Jesus to convey and act on. The gist of this is, uphold the religion and leave out division therein. What you call the idolaters towards, such as the declaring the oneness of Allah and leaving out the worship of others besides him, is difficult for them. Allah chooses whichever of his servants he wills and guides them to his worship and obedience and he guides to him those of them who return to him by repenting from their sins. Q and 42 13 The religion that God ordained for them was the pure monotheistic faith, which is represented in the statement. There is no God that has the right to be worshipped except Allah. He ordered all of his messengers to call to this. This is what the polytheists found difficult accepting and for which reason they fought against God's messengers. This was the same thing that Abraham and Jacob, who was also known as Israel, commanded the people with, as Allah says. Remember, O prophet, when Abraham and Ishmael were raising the foundation to the Kaaba. As they did so, they asked with humility for Allah to accept all they did, including building the Kaaba. Allah hears what we say and knows our intentions and everything that we. They asked Allah to make them surrender in devotion to his command, humble towards him, not worshipping anyone besides him and to make their children and their descendants a nation who also surrendered in devotion to him. They also asked Allah to teach them how to worship him, to forgive them for their faults and shortcomings in doing what he instructed them. He turns to those who ask for forgiveness and is compassionate towards his creation. They asked Allah to send a messenger to their offspring from the descendants of Ishmael, to recite the revealed verses of Allah to them and teach them the Qur'an and the Sunnah. And to purify them from worshipping others alongside Allah and from all evil. He is the mighty in his essence, and the wise in what he does and in his decrees. No one turns away from the religion of Abraham, peace be upon him, to other ways of life except those who do not know their own worth, and are content with humiliation. God chose him as a messenger in this world and as a friend of God, and in the hereafter he will be one of the righteous people who fulfilled what God required them to do. And so reach the highest levels. Allah chose Abraham because of his swiftness in surrendering, telling him to be faithful and devoted to him in worship and to humbly do as he instructed. Abraham replied to his Lord saying that he had surrendered in devotion to him, who created his servants, providing for them and taking care of their affairs. Abraham advised his sons to also say, I have surrendered to the Lord of people, and Jacob told his sons to do the same. They told their sons that Allah had chosen for them the religion of surrendering in devotion, Islam, and to hold on to it tightly until they died. Surrendering sincerely to Allah on the inside and the outside. Were you present at the time of Jacob's death, when he asked his sons what they would worship after he had died?
They replied to him, saying that they would worship Allah, the Lord of his forefathers, Abraham, Ishmael and Isaac, namely, the one Allah without partners. And they said that they surrendered in devotion to him alone and were bound to him. Q and 2 colon 127-133 This is truly a tremendous religion, in which they submitted their will to the Lord of all that exists. Turn to him in repentance and sought refuge in him to make their offspring one that submits itself to God. They invoked him to send unto them a messenger from amongst themselves who would recite his verses to them. Teach them the book and the wisdom, and purify them with purification and wisdom that would keep them far away from idolatry, sin and misguidance. Allah states here that whoever turns away from his religion, which is pure monotheism, only fools himself. The main point derived from this verse is that the call of all of the prophets was in harmony. Each of their calls were calls to monotheism and submission, to God, and to the belief that there is no God that has the right to be worshipped except Allah. They called their nations to this and counseled their offspring who came after them to abide by it. The second point we want to focus on here was the council of Israel, who was also known as Jacob. The verse in the Bible about this is in conformity with the verse from the Qur'an in that the biblical text indicates that we should have love for God. This is also part of Islam. As a matter of fact, the religion of Islam also consists of many aspects and great deeds apart from love, for the Creator. Look at the response of Jesus and his tremendous counsel. Look at the faith of the scribe who asked him the question seeking an answer to benefit from, and his saying, You are right teacher. You have stated truthfully that he is one and that there is none other but he. And look at how the Messiah replied to him, saying You are not far from the kingdom of God. This, and Allah knows best, is a promise from him that he will be in paradise. And it indicates that anyone who doesn't believe in the oneness of God and that he alone should be worshipped will not be allowed to enter paradise. This is similar to what Allah says in the Quran when he informs us what Jesus said to the tribe of Israel, Worship Allah, who is my Lord and your Lord. Verily, whoever ascribes partners to Allah in worship, Allah will surely make paradise forbidden for him and his final abode will be the hellfire. And the wrongdoers will not have any supporters, in hell. The Christians who say that Allah is the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, have committed disbelief, as they have attributed lordship to someone other than Allah. The Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, himself said to them, O Israelites, worship Allah alone. He is my Lord and your Lord. We are all his servants. Whoever ascribes anything as a partner to Allah, then Allah will not allow them to ever enter paradise and their place will be the fire of hell. They will have no one to help or assist them before Allah and no one to save them from the punishment that awaits them. Q and 5 hours 72 minutes. Note, according to the language of the Torah and the Gospels, every righteous and dutiful follower of God is called a son of God. So the title of the son of God was not specific to just Jesus. 10. In chapter 5 of the Gospel of Matthew, verse 9. It states, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. 11. And in verse 45 of chapter 5 of the Gospel of Matthew, it states, So that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. 12. In verse 4 of the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, it states, You, therefore, must be perfect, as your heavenly Father is perfect. 13. In chapter 6 of the Gospel of Matthew, verse 1, it states, Beware of practicing your piety before men in order to be seen by them, for then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. 14. In chapter 23 of the Gospel of Matthew, verse 9, it states, And call no man your Father on earth, for you have one Father, who is in heaven. Translators note, the use of the relationship of father and son to refer to the connection between God and his righteous servants is not just limited to the New Testament of the Bible, rather. There can be found proof for it in the Old Testament as well. It is stated in the Bible, the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were fair. And they took to wife such of them as they chose. Genesis 6. 2. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bore children to them. These were the mighty men that were of old, the men of renown. Genesis 6. 4. When the Most High gave to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of men, he fixed the bounds of the peoples according to the number of the sons of God. Deuteronomy 32. 8. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. Job 1. 6. When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Job 38 verse 7. 
these verses show that the use of the term father and son also refers to the connection between the Lord and his servant. This was a practice established in the Bible for all people, so the Messiah, Jesus, was not specifically characterized with it apart from others. See the clear evidences of Takiyuddin al-Hilali, P.G.S. 6-10, Translator's Note, Further evidence from the New Testament that confirms this point that the use of the relationship between father and son as a substitute for the relationship between God and his servant is as follows, for they cannot die any more, because they are equal to angels and are sons of God, being sons of the resurrection. Luke 20. 36, for all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. Romans 8 verse 14, but to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God. John 1. 12, and not for the nation only, but to gather into one the children of God who are scattered abroad. John 11. 52, it is the Spirit himself bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Romans 8. 16, because the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and obtain the glorious liberty of the children of God. Romans 8. 21, that you may be blameless and innocent, children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world. Philippians 2. 15, see what love the Father has given us that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. 1 John 3. 1. By this it may be seen who are the children of God, and who are the children of the devil, whoever does not do right is not of God, nor he who does not love his brother. 1 John 3. 10. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandment. 1 John 5 verse 2. Perhaps this was the custom of some of the Jews and Christians, but God knows best, since it states in the Quran, the Jews and the Christians say. We are the children of God and his beloved ones. Say, why then does he punish you for your sins? Nay, you are but human beings from those he has created. He forgives whom he wills and he punishes whom he wills. And to Allah belongs the dominion of the heavens and the earth and all that is between them. And to him is the final return. Both the Jews and the Christians claimed, we are Allah's children and loved ones. Say, O Messenger, in refutation of their claim, why does Allah punish you for the sins you commit? If you were his loved ones, as you claim, he would not have punished you, by your being killed or disfigured in the world, and by means of the fire of hell in the afterlife. Because he does not punish those he loves. Instead, you are just like all other human beings. If any of them do good, Allah will reward them with paradise. If any of them do evil, he will punish them in the fire of hell. Allah forgives whomever he wishes through his grace, and he punishes whomever he wishes through his justice. The dominion of the heavens and the earth, and whatever is in between them, is Allah's alone. To him alone is the return. Q and 518. Any fair and balanced person with sound reasoning will realize that the Quranic verses we mentioned above contain a tribute, honor, warm reception, and high praise for Jesus. They confirm that he was a prophet and messenger and that he was one of the greatest messengers who carried the flag of monotheism. These verses also confirm that he called mankind to this monotheistic faith, which is to make all worship purely for God, and that he fought against polytheism. Warning those who adhere to it that they would reside eternally in hell, what an evil destination. These verses from the Quran also show how God absolved Jesus and his mother from the slander that the Jews accused them of and how he raised the status of Jesus and his mother making the statements the Jews made against him and his mother to be considered as disbelief and immense slander. Furthermore, the verses of the Quran and the Bible are in conformity with the fact that Jesus was a servant and messenger of God. This is a high position that no one can attain except for the greatest of messengers, which included Jesus. The teachings of Prophet Muhammad contained the same beliefs, and the Muslims believed in all of that. So what then is wrong with Islam and the Muslims? There is nothing wrong with Islam at all in the eyes of those who have sound reasoning and impartiality. Rather, the only wrong is the terrible statement that they make against God due to which the heavens are ready to tear apart, the earth split asunder, and the mountains fall in ruins. 
This statement is in total opposition to what is found in the Qur'an and the teachings of Prophet Muhammad and what the Muslims believe in. Not to mention what is found in the monotheistic texts that are still preserved in the Bible. Has not the time come for Christians, after hearing all this, to hasten and rush to Islam, especially the intellectual, educated and free-thinking ones amongst them? We call them again to stand up before God in groups and individually and reflect on this tremendous matter, of which there is no matter greater than it. With firm determination and fairness and while sincerely seeking to attain the truth for it is indeed a crucial matter, which can either lead one to paradise. The size of which spans the heavens and the earth, or the hellfire, whose fuel will be men and stones and which will be prepared for those who disbelieve to reside in forever. This is something all of the messengers agreed on and can be found in their revealed books, including Jesus, servant and messenger of God. At this point, we would like to say to you with full honesty and sincerity. Say, O Messenger, O Jews and Christians, people of the Scripture, come let us unite on a fair word in which we are all equal. That we worship Allah alone and we do not worship anyone besides Him, no matter what His rank and no matter how high is His status. And that we do not take one another as lords to be worshipped and followed besides Allah. If they turn away from the truth and fairness that you call them towards, then, O believers, say to them, bear witness that we have surrendered to Allah and are obedient to Him. Q and 3 hours 64 minutes. Translator's note, in the Qur'an. Allah refers to the Jews and Christians as people of the scripture due to the fact that they had been sent messengers with revelation, i.e. Moses with the Torah and Jesus with the Gospels. This is an earnest call requiring your strict attention. Do not let the enemy of God, Satan, divert and impede you from your objective of finding out the truth. The devil is indeed a clear and open enemy to you. He only calls his followers to be amongst the inhabitants of the hellfire, whereas Allah, the most kind and most merciful, calls you to paradise and to forgiveness. Allah invites you to the abode of peace and guides whom he wills to a straight path. By Allah, true success and prosperity in the worldly life and the hereafter can only be found in this great religion of Islam that has been ordained by God, Lord of all that exists. And by Allah, in Islam you will be able to find solutions for all of the problems facing mankind today, whether they are related to beliefs, politics, society, economy or daily etiquettes. Furthermore, Islam eliminates the hostilities, hatred and malice that a person harvests in life that may cause him to enter the hellfire. There is no religion or way of life on the face of this earth today that truly contains what we stated previously except for this magnificent religion with its miraculous Qur'an. The tremendous teachings of Prophet Muhammad, its precise and wise principles and its firm fundamentals. So I urge you to hasten to the real means that will bring about salvation for you from misery in this life and the next and liberation from destructive wars and stifling worries. O oh Allah, I ask you to guide these nations, of Christians, to your upright religion and straight path. Verily. You are able to do all things and respond to all requests. There will be a continuation to this treatise, in which we will clarify the greatness of Islam and the truthfulness of its messenger, Muhammad. As well as how he and his message are far removed from extremism and negligence and in conformity with sound intellects and uncorrupt innate natures.